Welcome back to Cooking with Jerry. I'm gonna prepare my dinner for tonight and it'll be the same method that I used uh, last night with the video uh, cooking the vegetables in a combination of water and oil. So it'll be steaming, boiling and frying not so much frying all together. What I have for dinner tonight is some celery, spinach, broccoli, a tomato, a sweet potato, and some green beans. And here I have two different kinds of peanuts that have been soaking in the water for not long enough. But I didn't plan ahead of hand, so it's been about half an hour. Uh, the cooking process will help prepare the peanuts for easier digestion and absorption into my body. So that's what's on the menu. I'm going to clean everything and we'll come back when it's time to start chopping. Alright, now we have the vegetables all ready to be cut and put into the frying pan. I'm going to turn the fire on, get the pan heated up. I'm going to use uh, coconut oil. Uh, this is virgin coconut oil and coconut oil is very stable. About a tablespoon. No, two tablespoons. Coconut oil is very stable at the high heat, so it's one of the better oils to cook from. And I'm going to add the water. It's about right here, the water, so less than half a cup. It's important to add the water before the oil gets too hot, so you don't get the smoking of the oil. Um, yeah. So, first thing that's going to go in are the peanuts. Two different kinds of peanuts. Uh, I emptied it. And got rid of the water and rinsed it again. Uh, these are the one kind of peanut is from the coast uh, and the other kind of peanut is local. This is perfect climate for peanuts. So that's going to start to get hot. Out of all these vegetables the most dense is the celery and I've only got one stock of celery. Let me close the oil so I don't spill it. Uh, because there's lots of other green stuff. The broccoli I have to finish today because it's almost turned. I don't have a lot of space because of the veggies. So celery goes in first. Dropping a few on the table. Clean it up. I like to use the leaves uh, if the leaves are still in good shape. Sometimes the leaves go brown, usually the first thing that will spoil on a celery is the leaf. So that's the first part and that will cook nicely. It's kind of windy, making sure the fire is still on. So now, similar to the celery, the broccoli stalk is also dense and takes longer to cook. So that's going to go in as well. I washed it nicely and I used my thumb to rub off the pieces that were almost turning. It's important to have a decent knife. Um, really makes a difference when you're preparing food, especially if you're doing a lot of chopping of vegetables. I consider myself mostly vegetarian, which means once or twice a month I'll eat either chicken or fish. But the rest of the time it's vegetables. Fruits not so much because as we've been discussing fruit has a lot of sugar 
Uh, still good for you though, but make sure you're not eating too much. Uh, and I've also read that fruit is best on an empty stomach. So when I eat fruit, it's usually as a snack, um, which also doesn't happen very often. I like bananas in pancakes. We made pancakes earlier today without using wheat flour. If you haven't seen that video yet, please check it out. Uh, easy way to make a healthier version of pancakes. So I'm going to move these out of the way because the next in line are the green beans. I also want to mention I like to have more color variation. I'm going to close this, keep the heat inside. I like to have more color variation. Right now it's mostly green except for the tomato and the sweet potato. Uh, but there was nothing else available at the stores. The one next door, the store next door, she's getting a um, fresh supply tomorrow of vegetables. And uh, she gets for me especially some things that the locals won't buy because uh, they're not accustomed. For example, purple cabbage. It's also a bit more expensive, the purple cabbage. But if you consider food as medicine, Spend the extra little bit of money and get decent products. Uh, after all, it's your body um, and your responsibility to take care of it the best way you know how. I can also mention that uh, Depending on where you are, fresh fruits and fresh vegetables may not actually be fresh. Uh, I know in Canada there's a very short growing season, so during the winter it's far too cold to grow any kind of plant. So the plants, the, the, the fruit and vegetables that you're getting from your grocery store are, I would say they're not so fresh because they've traveled some, from somewhere. Um, tomatoes come from Spain usually or Mexico. Uh, so that's a bit of travel time. Um, bananas usually come from Ecuador, Costa Rica, sometimes Thailand. I'm having to cut a little bit away because these green beans, I saw them at the store two days ago and uh, some of the bits are a bit rotten. So I'm cutting away the rotten bits. So the fresh fruits and vegetables in that section of your grocery store um, not so fresh. My suggestion is, if you haven't realized this already, is check out the frozen fruits and vegetables. Um, because, number one, they're usually cheaper. Uh, you get a big bag for three dollars if it's on sale, or sometimes even if it's not on sale. Uh, the second good thing is they're usually always cleaned and cut although I would still rinse them underwater. But the more important part is they are picked when they are ready. They are not picked in advance to survive the journey and last on the store shelf for however many days. So fresh fruit and vegetables. I, that's how I do it usually. During the summer I try to go to the markets um, for the local uh, vegetables that are ready, um, but that's a very short part of the year in Canada. Uh, other countries, uh, depends on how close you are to the equator, I guess. The farther you are away, the colder your winter is going to be. 
Uh, I buy the frozen vegetables. I know with avocados, for example. Here is a perfect climate for avocado. The store had this, um, but it's not ready until tomorrow. When I was in Canada, there was too many times where I'd buy that small bag of three avocados. I'd you know, feel it every day because if you go one or two days too long, the avocado spoils. And too many times I would feel the outside of the skin and it was still hard, but that's because the skin was hard. Inside it was ready. Uh, so I switched to buying frozen avocado. It's three dollars a bag when it's on sale and because it stays in the freezer it doesn't spoil. Uh, you wouldn't want to keep it there for six months. Um, and it's not the same flavor consistency as fresh avocado uh, but you can use it. I, I used it for a lot of dishes. Um, I can use it for cakes. I, I made avocado brownies which were really good and you're not wasting money which is always a pain. Here is the sweet potato. Now this sweet potato has a lot of sugar in it so it's rare that I'll eat sweet potato and I almost never eat potato. Here I have a plantain which used to be green this morning. Uh, it's turned yellow which means the sugars inside are causing the banana to become more sweet. The rotting process, once you pick it off the tree, the rotting process causes it to be sweeter. I had one yesterday for dinner. Uh, it's got lots of good properties but lots of sugar. So here I like to rinse the sweet potato after I've cut it because it's a little bit sticky. So excuse my back for these few seconds. Shake it on the floor. I have an unfinished concrete floor so it's not a big deal if there's a few drops of water. Now this goes in next. I don't like my sweet potato to be mushy. I like it to have a little bit of consistency. So that's in. Really simple process. This might be the last time I show you this with the vegetables. I'll do it again. There's a piece of celery. I'll do it again with a piece of chicken to show you that process. It's basically the same, but I kind of think it'll help if you can actually see it. If you can see the process. And uh, I can also throw the tomato in there. The tomato's going to give it a nice color. And it'll also add a little bit of uh, liquid. You'll see I am not removing this stem connection to the plant. I used to, but recently I decided I'm going to eat it. It's part of the plant, and if my body can't use it, it'll act as fiber, which is great for the gut flora, for the, uh, the bacteria inside your intestines. And we're almost done. You know, the, the next will be the broccoli. I've mentioned previously in videos, uh, depending on how you like your vegetables. If you need your vegetables to be a little bit softer, less crunchy, keep them in for longer. If you have different, I lost one on the ground, if you have different people in the family that have different tastes, um, maybe you, for example, like it crunchy, your kids like it softer. When it's at the end of the process for your liking, remove your portion. So this is your dinner, let's say, or supper, or lunch, whatever it is you're preparing, which has the crunchier veggies and the rest of it is for the family. Also I'm going to throw in, ah uh, there's a green bean I missed, the broccoli is going in, 
Last is the spinach because I don't really want to cook the spinach. I just want it to be heated. The green bean that was left over, it'll be the crunchiest. And that'll be a few minutes and while the broccoli gets cooked, probably not a few minutes, probably two minutes, I can talk about some other stuff I have written down here on a list. I've spoken about this spatula. It's a great tool for a kitchen. Uh, I've been using similar for 10 years. The previous one had a red top and a plastic handle and after a few years the plastic handle broke from repeated knocking on the frying pan to get the food bits off. Uh, so once that was broken I went back to the store and decided to get a wooden handle um, and it's lasted four years and I don't do the knocking on the frying pan so much maybe I don't do it ever I don't know uh, but please if you're gonna go this route invest in the better quality rubber there are a lot of cheaper ones available you, you know, I've seen them in a package of three, they're all white. The price is much less and you might be uh, tempted to go for the cheaper price. But those white plastic ones, they don't bend. It's not going to give you the same, same clearing. I, I can clear the edges of the frying pan, but with that cheaper version, the cheaper plastic, I can't do that. So I'm going to suggest you invest the extra, I don't know how much it would be, I don't even remember how much I paid for this one. But it's not much, it's a useful tool. So that's one thing I wanted to say. The second thing I wanted to say is um, salt. Now the body is, I checked on the internet, the body is 0.4% salt which means the body needs salt. It's very important for many functions that happen inside the body. The problem with salt is getting too much and the main way that people get too much salt is if you're buying food that's already prepared. The fast food restaurants use a lot of salt to make the food taste better the many restaurants do the same. Many of the pre-packaged processed foods have extra salt to make it taste better to compensate for the lower quality ingredients. But if you're preparing your food at home, I always prepare my food. There's been one time in the past four months that I ate somewhere else. Uh, but I know this friend really well and I trust that she has the proper information to prepare a healthy meal and she did. Uh, I always prepare my food so I have to add salt otherwise I, I'm going to suffer. My body is going to suffer. I know if I don't get enough salt I get crazy cramps in my legs especially while I'm sleeping which disturbs my sleep which is important sleep is the best time for your body to recover so I always add salt and whenever possible the spinach will be in here for about a minute whenever possible I use the pink salt the white salt is iodized, it has iodine in it, and the book I told you about, uh, Dr. Mark Harmon, Food, What the Heck Should I Eat? He explains that we never need iodized salt. So that gives me another reason not to use the white salt. Uh, Another thing, vegetable oil. Uh, there's a lot of 
uh, cheaper versions of vegetable oil. When I choose a vegetable oil, I consider, no, not vegetable oil. When I choose an oil, I consider the beginning product. How easy is it for that product to turn into an oil? Let's take an example, corn oil. If you look at a cob of corn, it doesn't have much oil. So to pull the oil from that cob of corn requires a lot of heat and a lot of heat is going to change the nutrition of the oil. I, for example, sunflower seed. Dr. Mark says sunflower seed oil is not so good, but it's a seed and in a seed there's lots of oil. So for me, I'm kind of going against his recommendation because a sunflower seed, I think it's fairly easy to pull oil from it and have a reasonably healthy oil. I don't use it every day for sure, it's, uh, but it's on my shelf and I'll use it at the beginning of a cooking process. Instead of using the, cooking, the coconut oil today, uh, I could have used the sunflower seed oil. Um, palm oil is another one <clears throat> that has a bad reputation. I'm not sure why. I'm kind of on the fence. I think the main reason is because a lot of old growth forest is being chopped down and replaced by this monoculture, meaning only one kind of tree which is not good for the animals and insects that were in that old growth forest before it was clear cut. But if you take a little pod, that's that. I'm going to turn the fire off as I continue speaking. If you take a little pod of the palm oil, I've had them in my hand, they're oily already, which means it's easy to pull oil from that palm oil pod. I'm not sure what the name is. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, I don't use it because I don't know. Uh, there's other options. So in choosing an oil, keep that in mind. Uh, olive oil, really uh, olives, really easy to pull oil. Avocado, same thing. Coconut, same thing. Almonds, I have al almond oil. Uh, so that's my suggestion and I've said before, I can repeat it. Any kind of extra virgin oil best to use it raw. So when I am ready to eat this, I'm going to choose one of my extra virgin oils, extra virgin oils, and pour it on my, my dinner. Uh, it's nice to have a, a selection. They are expensive, but they last, you know, they last a long time. Uh, I have four or five different kinds of extra virgin oil. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to say, I have been watching my videos after I make them because I'm still learning the process and, and I want to improve wherever it's possible. And in my video watching, I can see this. And you might be curious, so I want to show you. It's here in this specific place because this is where I hang my cutting board when I'm not using it and it's a block it's a barrier between my cutting board and an ant tunnel uh, when I first got here two months ago I tried to clean I scraped off the ant tunnel uh, trying to make my kitchen a bit cleaner but overnight Overnight, the ants rebuilt their tunnel. It's about two meters. It crisscrosses between the cracks of the brick. So, living close to the rainforest, you, I want to have a balance between nature. Right here, inside this bamboo piece that's part of the shelving, this is their home. And I'm leaving their home as it is. I felt bad that they had to rebuild their tunnel. I'm sure they have other more important things to do than rebuild two meters of tunnel. Anyway, 
So this piece I made about a year ago, a year and a half ago. It's the, this is a calendar. The calendar was down here from last year. Here I want to show you because this has helped me, might help you. I've started learning about Buddhism. Take a picture if you want. About 20 years ago, 22 years ago when I started my yoga practice. And living with these every day will make anyone a happier person. If you want to play the game with me, you can choose one and remind yourself all day long of that one. Maybe Monday you want to think about gratitude. So many different ways to be grateful. Tuesday you want to think about love. Wednesday, acceptance, Thursday, peace, Friday, patience. Maybe it'll help you. And here is just the design. It's a partial yin-yang. I had made a yin-yang symbol to decorate a wall of a place I was staying at. And I spent enough time making the, the, the stencil for the yin-yang. I wanted to use it more than once and this is one of the ways I used it and here is the ohm symbol so I don't know if that was one of your ooh, what's that over there uh, but in any event it's a nice lesson if uh, if it's helpful for you so I'm going to turn the video off get everything cleaned up put my meal on a plate and uh, we'll come back to finish off this video Alright, I have the vegetables in my plate and there's a little bit left over if I'm still hungry after I finish this. I'll come a bit closer to show you, it looks pretty. There's a little bit of liquid, which is fine. Um, and what I'm going to do is add a bit of salt, two pinches. and a bit of avocado oil the oil i learned from dr mark's book the oil is necessary to help the body digest uh, the vegetables that need some kind of oil along with it to help digest it and there's one more thing Ooh, good catch that was a bottle of olive oil that a friend gave me. He was here for a couple nights and he has some leftovers. So instead of traveling with it, he gave it to me. And luckily I caught it because it's a glass bottle. Uh, I have a lot of stuff in these plastic containers just to minimize the bugs getting to them. Here in this sealable bag, I have marine algae in powdered form really healthy so I'm just gonna shake a little bit it's kind of windy so a lot of it's flying away but most of it's on the plate this kind of stuff I think it's better to eat raw it's it maintains its properties uh, if it's not cooked so I added that to my plate it also adds a little bit of flavor you may notice that I only use salt as my spice and that's because that's how I prefer it um, adding any other spice like oregano which I used to to me it just it overwhelms the flavor all I taste with every bite is oregano um, I don't want that I, I want every bite to taste the vegetables and I'll taste a little bit this time of the sea algae. If you like spice, go for it. Paprika, curry, um, many people have a selection of different spices. Uh, that's your freedom. Um, so yeah. And two things I wanted to add that I uh, missed on the first part. Number one is the sweet potato. Uh, it's a once or a twice a month 
addition to my my dishes uh, because it has a lot of sugar it has a lot of other good properties uh, but because the high percentage of sugar it's rare once or twice a month and I'll tell you also I use this scouring scrubbing pad to clean the skin I like the skin on the sweet potato sometimes I don't sometimes I peel it because the skin's not quite so fresh uh, but today's sweet potato, the skin was great. So I used this to scrub it and um, clean it. And the last thing I want to add is about the ants I spoke about. And you might be wondering why do ants have a tunnel? Now I've never checked online, but I think the main reason is for protection. Um, we're right near the, uh, the nature. Uh, I don't think they have the brain capacity to realize that they're already somewhat protected. Uh, it's so that the birds or whoever would eat an ant can't see them. They're covered by the tunnel. Uh, if you want to check online, go for it. I haven't done it yet. Anyway, so thanks for watching. That was a fun video. I'm going to enjoy my meal and uh, tomorrow will be another video. I haven't decided yet what to do. I've spoken about the bread. Maybe tomorrow's the day we make bread over hot coals. It's just the time, take time because uh, you have to build a fire. Uh, I don't want to use any kind of lighter fluid or lighter cube. So it takes about an hour to prepare the hot coals. And then it takes over an hour to cook because uh, a lot of heat escapes. Uh, we'll decide tomorrow. Uh, thanks for watching.